Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for standing by. This is Neerav, the moderator for your call today. Welcome to the post results conference call of AIA Engineering Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now like to turn the conference over to the AIA engineering management team. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you, Nirav. Uh, a good, good evening to all of you, and thank you for joining our call. This is Konal. We also have Sanjay Bhai on the call with us. Uh, as always, I'll get into you know, a summary for the quarter, and uh, we can quickly get on to question and answers thereafter. Uh, you know, finally, you know, this year, over nine months, you know, we've grown materially from nine months in the last, in the previous period. You know, we've seen about, we've seen a few years where we had different types of, you know, uh, headwinds, <clears throat> different headwinds of different natures, and, you know, which, which there was some amount of uh, growth related question. Um, so I'm happy to report from about 187,000 tons from eight, nine months previous period, we've done 217,000 tons. You know, about 30,000 tons more uh, 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 for the for, for the nine-month period. We got about 71,500 tons for the quarter, and uh, for the whole year, we should be between 295 and 300,000 tons. You know, hopefully crossing the 300 mark finally. So <clears throat> we are happy to report that uh, the, that sale of 71,500 tons translates into sales of about 1,200 crores, 1209 crores. And uh, you know an EBITDA of 39.42%, uh, which is now that this this quarter has been very interesting. Like last three four years for us have been every single variable, every single you know uh, assumption you know got tested. You know we you know there are several things in several wheels in motion. Thankfully we are in a business where the customer depends on us for keeping his wheels in motion, right? Our product, you know, feeds into a supply chain where uh, the, end, the, you know, the, the, the end user industry, which is cement and mining, you know, the, thankfully they've been humming, you know, in many cases growing, and our product becomes an important replacement part of their supply chain, of their consumption, of their uh, production. Uh, so thankfully, you know, from a growth standpoint, from a consumption standpoint, uh, while that continued, we saw a lot of changes in terms of raw material, currency, freight costs, right? Availability of containers. So finally, it looks like that you know a lot of those cost pressures are ebbing away. So when I when I look at a debit of 39.42, and of course there's a uh, treasury income in that you know of about uh, 40 crores or 40 42 crores, you know, the rest of that being uh, operating in nature. But there's about 5%, you know, in treasury gains. You know, end of December, the rupee was at 82 plus levels. And uh, a lot of our invoicing for that quarter was paid to a low to lower amount, right? The rupee had weakened in that small period rapidly. Uh, <clears throat> so there's an other income, there's a operating other income related to currency. We also had a very favorable product mix, you know, just in terms of this period. So about a 2%, 3% margin that got, you know, added on that account. So uh, those two put together is about seven to eight percent. You, you know, there's a uh, margin that's sitting on 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 uh, currency and product mix. On the cost side, you know, we've seen raw materials, you know, correct from between eight and ten percent. So there is some ease off. My uh, most of our contracts now have a price pass through mechanism. So my pricing this quarter would reflect the raw material cost in the previous quarter, right? So when the pricing kept going up, there was a pain lag and now there is a there, there'll be a small period where you know the price uh, reduction will follow by a lag so there is you know three to four percent of that sitting you know which is all costs related to raw material and uh, freight costs some amount of freight cost has also started coming in so from a margin standpoint of course the next question you know would be what uh, a guidance on margin going forward uh, i think we'll continue with our policy i think uh, we look at our business over many decades, um, at least you know many years in, in, in front of us. And uh, when we are building such a franchise, uh, it, I, it's very futile, you know, for us internally to look at every quarter after other. So while we 
continue maintaining a 20-22 percent, you know, operating EBITDA margin. Uh, it is more directional, more indicative. There are quarters, especially last few quarters, we've done better than that, and there have been quarters in the past where then worse than that. But I think that continues to remain. Uh, I think maybe next quarter we can share a little more uh, sharpened uh, margin guidance for the next year. But uh, for now, in uh, the volatility continues, you know, while some raw material prices have re- reduced, we've seen a bounce back in those rates. So the amount of volatility that we are sitting on is is uh, unchartered. And, and in, in that case, trying to, you know, predict uh, variables and then give a margin continues to be a challenge for us. I think all we are trying to say is that over the last three, four years, our business has demonstrated the ability to work with the clients, work with customers, and progressively be able to pass through most costs, you know, uh, on the way up. Now, obviously, with a you know, fair and square basis, it will be adjusted down. And that's what makes us proud that there's a fair as a franchise you've built where, you know, we are not dependent on the winds of, you know, how the market moves. Okay, uh, moving forward. So, EBITDA at 483 crores, of course, highest ever EBITDA, Absolute EBITDA margin, uh, um, EBITDA amount, absolute value ever. Profit before tax of 453 crores and profit after tax of 350 crores. It's been a record uh, as far as profit is concerned, record quarter. And uh, so nine month profit remains at 787 crores, which is up from 425 crores uh, nine months uh, last year. Uh, our export benefits, which is uh, the road tap scheme, remission of duties and taxes, uh, that is at about 16.90 crores, largely in line with the previous two quarters. Treasury income is a little higher uh, this quarter compared to previous. There's 42 crores. Uh, and there's a large uh, foreign exchange gain of 75 crores. Some part of this foreign exchange is also related to cross currencies, not just uh, rupee dollar. But uh, we do, uh, you know, we have some exposure in other cross currencies. And, uh, you know, this largely reflects a dollar weakening, not just against the Indian rupee, uh, but also, you know, cross currencies that we have an exposure to. Uh, Our raw working capital continues, you know, at par. uh, Raw material is at 138 crores at uh, 30 days. Working capital, all our stock, uh, WIP and finished goods is at about 1,000 crores, 991 to be precise. And receivables is about 63 days, 853 crores. I think all working capital numbers are largely in line. Um, This quarter of the 71,500 tons, uh, there's a little higher portion that's come from uh, other sectors, which is cement, uh, at 27,100. Of course, and, and, and we keep maintaining that. Uh, so nine months, if you look at it, 73,000 tons versus 61,000 tons. And, uh, you know, full year will be closer to, say, 95,000 tons. So there's, there's a, so on a full year basis, non-mining did about 90,000 tons. And uh, this year, maybe, maybe 10,000 tons more. So I don't think we should read a lot into the quarterly changes. Mining is at 44,000 tons for the quarter and 144 uh, for five, full year, you know, nine months. Sorry, for nine months. 144,000 tons for nine months and 73,000 tons for uh, non-mining, which is cement and you know, thermal utility. Okay. Uh, some key numbers before, you know, we, uh, a lot of you have those questions. So ferrochrome was around 117, 120 rupees a kilo at the start of the year, that's between 105 and 100 rupees a kilo, about 10 to about 10 percent lower. And likewise, scrap. Uh, we are sitting on net cash of 22308 crores, 2300 crores. Uh, full year, we've already, you know, I've already mentioned. We looked at we look at about 295 300,000 tons for this year. Going forward, 24 about. Uh, 30,000, 30,000, 30, 35,000 tons is something that I think looks doable for now. Uh, of course, that includes mill liners. So this year, full year, FI23, uh, we, we think we'll do about 6,000 tons of production and sales from that plant and uh, about 24, 25,000 tons of total sales uh, coming from mining mill liners. Uh, and that should grow by another 15,000, 10 to 15,000 tons next year. And and based on that, about a 30-35 overall growth, you know, for fiscal year 24. 
Lastly, as far as CAPEX is concerned for next year, we'll do about 300 crores. Uh, this year, we've done, done about 135 crores. We have another 70, 75 odd to spend. So we'll do about 200 crores of CAPEX this year. Uh, next year, it should be about 300, which is 200 for the the grinding media expansion for 80,000 tons that we are doing, which will take our capacity from 440 to 520. Uh, some land of 30 crores, uh, balancing capex, you know, and some other enhancements that we are doing at about another 60, 70, 80 crores. So that put together, it's about 300 crores of capex uh, for the next year. So broadly, I think uh, while a lot of sectors, you know, are, are worried about what what global, uh, you know, uh, winds look like, I think uh, our focus on uh, the core industries of cement and mining, I think, continue to give us confidence that, you know, irrespective of what happens on global markets, at least the coming 12 months, you know, we've got, there isn't any uh, macro worry, you know, at least as far as what we are hearing from the customers. Uh, we continue to do our work on many fronts, you know, as far as our customers in mining are concerned, which is, you know, the down process benefits, you know, the whole solution that we are bringing in with our mill lining offering, right? And uh, ultimately becoming a partner to the mining customers will be enhancing, you know, all all benefits that they can accrue by partnering with us and using our products. So no other major, you know, uh, highlight to speak of. I think it will be business as usual uh, next 12 months. Uh, having said that, I'll request Sanjay Bhai if he wants to, you know, share a few insights and oh, then we'll take two. Q &A. So thank you um, and thanks everyone for your interest. So it was a very interesting quarter, very excellent set of numbers, but as Kunal clarified, quite a bit of it can be regarded as one of having said that the basic business outlook remains the same, the opportunity remains equally exciting and all the efforts are on to take a significant share slowly and gradually away from the forged into high chrome and directionally everything else remains the same so from a business strategic point to opportunity point our earlier talk that we should be able to do at least around 30,000 plus year over year addition incremental volume i think all that remains and we believe that uh, uh, as we go ahead we should be able to share more exciting news so i think with this let the house open for q and a Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone and await your turn to ask the question when guided by the facilitator. If your question has been answered before your turn and you wish to withdraw your, your request, you may do so by pressing star and two key. You are requested to use handsets while asking your question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question The first question is from the line of Ashutosh Tewari from Equity Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, I could understand Sanjay. Congrats on very good numbers. Uh, Thanks. So firstly, on the volume front, obviously after a very long time, we're delivering very strong numbers. Uh, and so in, in the mining side, it's still driven by uh, copper and gold only. These are the two bigger windows contributed to this growth. Yeah, so copper and gold, and of course, we're doing a little bit work, some work in iron ore that also continues to be a uh, area of interest, and mill lining, which is not just gold and copper. So I think uh, it's a mixed bag, at least as far as uh, there is no single ore driving disproportionate uh, volumes. And you also mentioned about this uh, 6,000 tons of production and sales from the new plant. This is a full year, right? Yeah, yeah. we'll do about, we've done about 2,500 tons. Till now, in this quarter, we'll do another 3,000 tons. Total about 65 to 6,000 tons is what we'll do from the new plant. Okay, okay. And uh, uh, semen volumes, like obviously, nine-month figure is probably one of the highest that we've done in last uh, four or five years in the nine-month period. So is there something to read over there in terms of uh, not, any new addition or something? Been, we've done about 12,000 tons more, but uh, uh, I, I, there, there's a little bit volume that we've done with uh, non in the thermal bit in India, you know, but I think broadly 90,000 tons is, is 90 to 100,000 tons. It's not, 80, 85 is not going to become 150. So still the materiality is not there. 
Yeah, yeah, but after a long time, we are seeing some growth over there. So that's why. Correct, correct, correct. So Thurman is saying that is concluded. We are happy about that, but none of those are factors that will give us, you know, material growth going forward. And this forex gain that is part of other income, uh, is it a decent chunk? Is due to uh, depreciation of INR versus Australian currency, Australian INR. USD? Yeah, yeah. So INR rupee would be about. 50 60% almost say 60 65 would be indian rupee but that is realized unrealized both put together and the rest would be cross currencies or exposure outside of india okay okay and uh, while we discuss about fed cost coming down but if you look at the fed cost number out of fed cost number that we reported now in as part of profit loss um, that amount is almost similar in this quarter yeah, versus you will have to quarter. look at you will have to look at our uh, Uh, link it with our export because you know we are not reporting our exported figure, right? We are shipping things out, and uh, it gets invoiced the following month or the following quarter, right? So that's how we are look. We know that the freight cost is going down on a. Uh, this is yeah, the yeah. actual freight cost incurred, not uh, the underlying export volume. This does not uh, show that. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, there is some reduction in freight cost which, co- which has also come through. And uh, RM part of it is not very material, but it is coming down, right? The freight cost, you know. Okay, some of the, the the lanes that we operate in are, you know, have seen consolidation, and which is where they may not, they have not seen the kind of reduction. Uh, few other, uh, you know, shipping lanes have seen the the, the trans traffic lanes that are there, uh, but we are hoping that will happen. I mean, shipping across the board has a weak outlook, right? So I think over the next twelve months, there is that's one cost. Aspect that will reduce, and uh, realization should come down from next quarter as a pass through happens. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, correct. Yes, slowly. Yes. And and like you said that our total liner, the mining liner will be will be around twenty four thousand for the full year. Uh, what was the number last year? About seventeen, eighteen, seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand. Yeah. So this another addition. This new liner plant only is contributing. Correct. 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 Okay. Okay, that's all from my side. All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next question is from the line of G Goel, a chartered accountant. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, good evening, sir. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, sir, my question is on the EBITDA per ton side. So basically, it is uh, consistently increasing for the last three quarters, right? And one year before, uh, these were around twenty-six thousand per ton. Uh, and if I talk about two zero two one, these were only twenty-four thousand. But in this uh, FY23, in first nine months, these are almost double, uh, double to forty-seven thousand. So my question is basically, uh, exactly what is happening? Is there any change in business economics that I am not getting? Uh, because I understand that part of the reason could be the raw material pass on is happening and pulling off the raw prices. But the thing is, uh, your absolute EBITDA is increasing, sir, and that can only happen if you are able to increase your prices in addition to the cost increase. Sir. I so, understand your question. So let me let me first and foremost. Mr. Goel, tell you that you should not look at EBITDA per ton because it is not a correct, reliable yardstick for two, three reasons. One, we don't operate with a standard product, so we have a very wide diversity of products, ranging from grinding media, then liners for cement, liners for mining. Then we have VSMS, that is vertical spindle mill spares, where the price range is very high. my point is that volume and pricing they do not go in parity and hand in hand and because of that if you don't have a standard unit of measurement you can't view it as a unit uh, ebitda per ton there are multiple so there is a product mix then there are different geographies different product economics so we should always look at ebitda in a percentage terms that to as kunal explained there are again on an operating ebitda side there are certain one of sort of benefits that they flow then we always do a pass through for example freight is 100% pass through as a additional uh, 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 direct add on item with the sales and the other end raw material variation is also pass through on both positive as well as negative side with of course a lag so when there are so many variables ebitda per ton will be a misnomer having said that we have already clarified what are the reasons why this year you see a very sharp this quarter very sharp increase in ebitdas 
we have explained that there is a effect of uh, treasury even if you remove forex and if you look at pure operations there also we have a benefit of raw material pass through not affected or rather the selling price adjustment not made exactly in tandem with the raw material reduction so you know there are multiple factors which you have to say but as we explained an operating ebitda of around 22 odd percent pure operating ebitda is what is a very base case and there are chances it will go up but at this point in time we are not giving any guidance on the margins so this is the scenario sir i can't answer why my ebitda pattern is going up or down because i am not internally evaluating based on that okay and understood sir uh, understood when the second thing sir you mentioned uh, your volume will be around 3 lakh uh, kind of uh, for entire year. Three lakh this year yes okay yes and uh, for that uh, for the complete uh, for the complete year also you are guiding this 22 to 23% ebitda margins or you are guiding nothing we are not the guiding entire... anything. what we are saying is this is the base case with which we will we will be working why we are not guiding we have been in the past saying that our current entire focus is market share and conversion from forge into high chrome and there are therefore very very different challenges that we are facing having said that we have a business model is robust to deliver higher margins uh, than this 22 odd percent we are talking about but having said that at this point in time we are not saying that we will do it we are saying this is 100 percent feasible but right now there is no guidance on the ebitda side or on the margin side okay uh, that that was the one point and second thing is uh, how how you look at your top line sir uh, after financial year 23 in the terms of uh, volume if you can guide so no see what happened we can only give you an indication about the volume which we have been very consistent now we are saying that at least a 30 or 1000 ton per year incremental volume growth having said that if you see my average realization in this quarter and the previous quarter around 165 or so per kilo now that is a function of product mix that's a function of the raw material pass through and the freight pass through which has been reflected in a higher realization having said that if the raw material prices can come down in quarter over quarter in a consistent manner and if freight goes down my realization pattern can definitely go down now wo kitna jayega it is not not possible to let you know today because even we don't know so therefore a volume growth and a very consistent margin is what we are internally looking at rather than uh, you know an absolute otherwise you know this absolute number in tandem i can say there will be a 10% top line growth but that may not happen you get my point understood sir understood and uh, thank you very much sir uh, that is so much thank you thank you next question is from line of pujan shah from cogent advisors please go ahead uh, hi sir first question would be on the uh, first of all the production per metric ton and the sales metric ton so in this quarter we our, our total production is 64000 and our sales is 71 so uh, i think uh, from last uh, let's say from 7 8 quarters we are low at production so are we seeing any difficulty in the production side or like due to Uh, installing new facility it is been like with the low production and it is it can take some jump to 75 77000 in next quarter i think it was only a working capital optimization uh, i mean that's something that we keep doing as there, there was a higher amount of stock if you go back to our commentary over whole of last year because of containers not being available we were we were keeping more stock in transit right against an order to make sure that customer there is no situation when the customer is without you know supply i think progressively as things improve uh, today we are not you know uh, speculating on how much improvement can happen but we've been able to do so because there is visibility of containers and shipping lines you know and and delivery times so there is some amount of adjustment that we are trying to do at this time i think it's just a optimization exercise right now and uh, okay. just to add when you said difficult in production there is no technical difficulty it's just an average operating capacity utilization of around 65% that we are currently having it will inch up as the volumes go up but we can't go beyond 75% or 80% theoretically because this capacity is also calculated based on a assumption about a particular product mix 
so you know there is also sanjay bhai also sanjay bhai are the plants that we are setting up are higher capacity right 50000 yeah, mill lining plant i we cannot u- utilize that in the first year so as we grow and our minimum size of plants is a little higher is where you know utilization levels appear a little low but that is why we are giving some guide we trying to give some guidance on sales volume each year you know uh, for that visibility okay sir okay and sir, uh, the 300 crore capex i have actually uh, not get that point so i i missed that point on that part so is that 300 crore plus 200 crore grinding million no no right? total uh, total 300 crore capex for next year fy24 okay. as we okay. speak you know of which majority is towards the grinding media expansion that we are doing about 200 crores goes towards that, that. 200 yeah. and uh, 100 crores and it goes there is we need to buy you know land there's lot of because we are setting up plant yeah internal optimization efforts are going on 30 crores towards buying land and 70 crores towards maintenance capex some other you know capacity rationalization etc automation other projects that we have taken up internally okay sir and my third question would be on the 20 uh, 2300 crore cash so i assume that 300 crore would be deployed in the capex part for the next year still we hold a 2 2000 crores of cash and a cash and yes. cash equivalent so what yes. are the plans of we are planning to getting into are we looking at inorganic opportunities or uh, we are uh, rewarding shareholders for some portion for that no so i tell you we have been very consistent on this we are a very conscious that yes we are carrying a significant uh, uh, volume of cash or illiquidity with us having said that it's very strategic because a as we explained year over year we will have to do capex b we will have so have to invest significantly in our working capital because we are concentrated in india in all of our production uh, related efforts and the sales happens across 125 countries of the world through a network of more than 20 25 warehouses that we maintain and we will have to ensure that we are able to give just in time deliveries to customers uh, there could be some opportunity but at this point in time we believe that till we reach a reasonable level of sales uh, in mining and we acquire a decent market share and we reach a, a stable internally stable situation we want to have that luxury of carrying a little bit of extra cash and liquidity yes we are conscious that current payout ratios are not high having said that we are reviewing it and uh, we will definitely evaluate that if there is a surplus cash available and there is no such opportunity in sight we will take an appropriate call but at this point in time at least for next one year we we don't want to take any such call okay can, can i squeeze one question more please Yeah, yeah sure go ahead yeah 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 so sir on the mining and other if we see uh, we have been a uh, great improvement like let's suppose from si 21 uh, we can see from 20000 uh, from 16000 to let's suppose we are reached 27000 others so are we saying the others have been more margin lucrative compared to mining media or like the margin are been all dependent to the commodity cycle and how the actually the rationalization goes on No, no, sir. I, I don't think, think so. Right. Cement and mining largely have a have a material margin difference. I mean, these are all products for us, and pricing for each is a combination of a lot of things. Uh, but but margin, the expansion of margin that has happened is, of course, you know, uh, there is some amount of uh, commodity pass through that is there. You know that that remains, and some part of that will will see a uh, you know easing going forward. Okay, okay, that is for me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Priyankar Biswas from Nomura Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations, Kunal Bhai and Sanjay Bhai, for uh, very good result. I would say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so my first question is like uh, when I see your numbers for the nine months. and it seems that uh, for this year you are very much on track to do possibly a 100 rupees plus eps that is what it seems like i mean based on the nine months now yes. now next uh, fiscal year fy24 i believe that there would be some price pass through to customers i mean uh, as the things cool off the freight and the commodities and uh, as you said that like a 22% margin broadly 
so in the next year uh, how do we grow our profitability or pat because it seems that this year is so high that it even with a let's say 35 40 kt growth next year it becomes kind of a tough so that's the first question so what are your thoughts on that so priyankar thank you for telling us that yes our eps will be 100 this year <laughs> my point is as a management we really really don't look at the numbers from a narrow standpoint what we know we know what is the opportunity what is the challenge and what we have to achieve so we know that if the opportunity is say 2 million tons or 2 and a half million tons and i am presently still scratching the surface so to say i have to ensure that i keep on going and converting maximum number of mines and reach a position where i become a dominant player in the space where i'm operating we know that technically technologically we are unquestionably a leader today in the world but whether from a market share standpoint what is it that i want to achieve so the whole focus is how do we convert mines of course make it profitable and of course ensuring that once we convert generally the customer stickiness will ensure that i keep on growing my business with them so as kunal explained and as we are very clear a one off can always happen one off on the positive side one off on the negative side what is very important is that is my business model robust enough that year over year if i gain say 10 15% market share or top line and i continuously increase my sales can i maintain or even grow my basic core operating a bit ta from what is it my current level my answer internally is yes yes we can do that my business model is strong enough having said that therefore we are not worried that if this year say my pat breaches or is nearly 1000 crores or say anything closer than that then there are years where you know we had shown that there were dips now this is a very decent year of course our internal endeavor will be to see that we continue to deliver similar decent numbers but there is no internal comparison that if this year i have done 1000 i have to do 1200 next year what is important for us is what is it that i am gaining how many new mines i am gaining which are the new markets i am surmounting and how i my traction continues this is the entire focus i am sorry i am bit candid but this is the fact mm-hmm. Uh, so that's quite a nice answer. Uh, so since you talked about the markets and all, so actually two related questions on that. Uh, so uh, like uh, since you are exploring about new markets, so what are the geographies that we are like uh, seeing a very strong traction right now? And parallelly, uh, like within this uh, strong results for the last three quarters, uh, sorry for this quarter. was there some benefits from the sal acquisition that you had done uh, to vertically integrate into the raw material space that you had done i think 3 4 months back was there any benefits of that so as there well is, there is no, no acquisition i think that i think that so uh, first question uh, i think when he when sanjay bhai made new markets does, i mean there is enough work that's already done we just have to harvest those efforts priyankar there is not one new mind that we are going to where we expect a lot of work to come there is we have been dogged in our perseverance in our efforts to keep engaging keep you know ensure, keep demonstrating that we can be a valuable partner it's a longer lead cycle as we continuously try to explain and the, the the benefit of this long lead effort is that once we are in it remains for a longer period we don't go through mm-hmm. the vagaries of you know subsequent economic cycles so i think from that market standpoint business as usual that was in my initial commentary there's nothing sig- material that you know we haven't mentioned or talked about uh the the the, the ferrochrome con- the agreement that we had done i think is on track i mean we are slowly ramping up uh, progressively uh, with we are also a listed company so i don't think we want to speak much about it i think it will just remain as one of our uh, supply partners along with other purchase vendors that we buy from for our raw materials uh kunal i actually meant like uh, whether there were some benefits from this agreement this quarter like uh, no, said it was there was it was not benefit linked right it was more trying to protect the supply chain right? more than anything else ferrochrome is an important uh, raw material for us 
and there is a plant in um, in Gujarat which is getting mm-hmm. the raw material. You know, it just gives us comfort that you know if something were to happen to the large one or two other vendors we are buying from, there is supply chain visibility. Okay, okay. And Kuralva, just last one question from my side. So it is a bit ESG related. So what is happening is uh, like uh, investors nowadays are often asking this question. Uh, like all the carbon border adjustment tax that the Europeans are proposing and maybe it becomes more prevalent in the uh, whole world. So what are our thoughts uh, regarding uh, reducing the carbon footprint? So maybe steps that you are planning to take, let's say, from no, so we are very years. proactive. We are very conscious, uh, uh, Priyankar. Last year, I think 23%, 18 or 23, not top of the head, but a hmm. reasonable amount of power came from our own renewable sources, right? And I think we'll take it to the max possible, which is 30 or 30. Given we are a foundry where our loads are not, our loads are variable, we cannot go to 100%, right? So mm-hmm. the base load that we consume, you know, based on current policies, you know, in states where we are present, we can go up to 30 or 35%. I think 30% broadly is what we will surely go to. It, you know, it also saves us cost. So there's no reason for us to not, you know, pursue that. Over and above that, there's a large carbon footprint saving that we do or reduction that we do on the customer side, right? If you're helping to produce more, if you're helping to recover from the uh, waste ore that goes out, or reduce power consumption at their end, right? Mm-hmm. That's a material, or reduce the toxic, you know, waste at the mining side. Mining companies, you know, reduction of footprint at their end is what a large part of our business is. So, I mean, we are, we are doing work to, you know, quantify and, and, and put numbers around that. It's not easy because we don't get a lot of that data back mm-hmm. from the customers, right? Or rather, in lost data from the customer, they don't want to share their numbers. But we know it's a very material uh, this thing, you know, but power is one of the biggest uh, carbon footprints from our standpoint. And if we can, you know, we are already 20, 23%. And if we go to 30, 35%, that itself is a material step forward for us. Okay. Uh, so thanks. That, that's all from my side, Kunal. Thank, Thank you, Priyanka. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Abhilasha, individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Go ahead. Yes. Yes, uh, sir, uh, can you explain the warehouse establishment strategy? Um, like we have our current nine warehouse globally. So how do we decide it? Is it volume dependent? Can you elaborate on that? I think warehouses are not in the sense that other companies have where you have a stock of material that whoever comes, you replenish or fulfill from that location. A lot of our, most of our warehouses barring, I think, two or three locations are customer-specific stocks. So when a customer places an order on us, given that we are not based in those countries, right? We are based in India. We're producing and exporting out of India. You know, they get comfort if there is stock on the ground closer to them. So, and we are doing a door delivered supply. We, we are not using a third party intermediaries doing the fulfillment or the uh, last mile sale to the customer, right? It's under our, our own uh, ages, which is where, so a lot of these stock point locations are, are stopped meant for a customer against an order which is already placed, right? So the strategy is that if there's a customer placing 10,000 or 15,000 tons of product from us, which is 1,000 tons a month, we are very happy to stock two or three months of stock closer to his location so that he gets a visibility for, you know, between four and six months. And that, you know, absolves the need for a local plant for us. So it's built, you know, it's, it's more customer specific and depending on the, you know, the ocean uh, lines, are, you know, et cetera, around that country. <laughs> okay, uh, so, but uh, the understanding is that uh, we have nine warehouses, right? And uh, considering that um, you said that the stocks are customer specific, um, now we are having uh, various customers across cement and uh, mining specifically. So, so uh, in, in turn, it is, it would be uh, one, one warehouse would be carrying you know, a different kind of stocks for different kind of customers, right? A, a, a warehouse would be specific to a customer, but it could be a, a same point where other... What is? What are you coming to? What's your end question? And no, no, so to get a better context for what you're trying to get. No. Maybe the answer is different than... 
what are you trying to do? What, what's your, what are you coming to? Now, oh, Teza, yeah. there are more. We are talking about 18 to 20, not 9. I don't know how, from where you got this number. Maybe you are referring no, no, to the number. No, no, I'm just saying, but what is 9? It keeps changing, right? Today, a customer changes. We may, may agree for a direct supply. So, number of warehouses is not material. What is your question? What's the context that you're getting, trying to understand? You know, maybe. So, so, the context is, uh, in just in trying to understand is, um, uh, you know, how our modus operandi of the business is, uh, in, in terms of supply. So uh, when you say it's a direct supply, then... So more than 70% it... supply is direct. This is more than 65-70% okay. of my supply is direct. For the balance in that's customer specific. There is no rule of thumb you know, within that where, you know, depending on customer circumstance, between one and three months of stock is kept for their comfort. When we start off, as we go forward, they get more comfort, we try and reduce that stock. But there is no rule of thumb. There is no specific... Uh, okay. overarching generalized you know statement i can make about our, our strategy for that okay okay understood understood so uh, can you explain that uh, where is the application of a forge media which is still better than a high chrome i think uh, uh, can we take that question offline there are you know many other investors who probably understand this difference we'll be talking about it sanjabi or i can if you don't mind we can spend half an hour and maybe explain a little bit more under how Forge and what our yeah, strategy is? Fundamental question because everything is a grinding application. Only thing is our media reduces the wear rates and makes the whole process efficient. Otherwise, the application is the same. Yeah, but yeah. it will require a little more context. I think just for the benefit of everyone else on the call, if you don't mind, we can have an offline chat and explain a little more of what we're trying to do with this. No. Uh, sir, uh, because sir, I was just, I'll just uh, mention where I was coming from and then I'll go to the next question. Is that in the Canadian anti dumping tribunal order, it was mentioned that SAG mills only use forged and not um, high chrome. So that was just the context where I'm coming from. So so first was, of all, there is criminal crime, my there, there is no criminal action there. It is just <laughs> Magato. We compete with Magato and as a competition, they do various, you know, they try various means to keep you know, uh, as, as a defense mechanism, right? They have a local plant over there and they're, 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 they're going to a body where they're, you know, alleging that there is a, a, a competition-related issue. So, and we are exactly. fully cooperating. It is a sub matter. I may not be able to speak more about it, but it is, no. a, it, it is a market where we are already supplying high chrome and they are also supplying high chrome. Yeah, yeah I understand. So, I, didn't, I didn't mention anything criminal. I just mentioned what was mentioned in the tribunal order, sir. The tribunal order mentions criminal. criminal. You might have, yeah. He mentioned tribunal, yeah. Tribunal, oh, sir. Sorry, Not sorry, 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 sorry. My bad. Yeah. So, so I think uh, uh, the, it is more the market is uh, high chrome where we are, us and Nagato are, are supplying and it's, it's related to those supplies. Okay, understood. So, uh, in the uh, the R and D expenses, where do they get reflected in the annual report? Sir? Under which uh, head do they R &D get reflected? R and D expenses are not in nature of where we invent a new alloy. A lot of work that we do is on an effect link. Where we're doing a new design, where we're doing a new alloy, where we're trying different combinations of chemistries and metallurgy and microstructure related to heat treatment. On top of that, uh, most of that work is where we're doing a supply, right? It, it, depending on end-user end conditions, you know, we design a product, we design the shape of the part or if there are castings, and uh, the alloy of which grinding media, the alloy or what size to use, depending on that end-user condition. So most, a lot of our uh, innovation comes from giving a solution to a set of end-user conditions. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to carve out expenses across the value stream and park those under R&D expenses because a lot of R&D that gets classified is more related to innovation and, you know, which we've got a lab or you've got a bunch of people whose cost gets allocated over there. Most of these are costs that are operational in nature and, and are uh, accounted as such. Okay, so, so that will be a part of cost directly, right? Yes, yeah, part of our operating expenses, correct. Okay. Sir, uh, sir, can you explain what, what percentage of our receivables are parked as retention money? Nothing. Sorry. There what? is no retention in my business. We are not EPC contractors. Okay, okay. Because, because there was uh, some mentioning of retention in the annual report. Uh, the, that's where I came from, sir. Okay, no problem, sir. Uh, and, uh, can you tell me? Huh? Hardly, but hardly. Hardly anything. But not a material amount. I mean, there could be some customers, you know, where there is some performance. If you have given a new product 
and some amount but it's very it's not a material amount you know uh, maybe it's an accounting uh, classification but i think material that as a concept we don't supply you know where our money is tied to any end goal right it's it's led to except if it's a trial or if we've given some new guarantees to get in or do additional work thank you abhilash i'll request you to come back in the question queue for a follow up question thank the you the next question is from line of dhananjay from ask investment managers please go ahead uh, hi sir maybe you uh, mentioned this but what volumes were you targeting this year and what were you targeting next year around 30000 tons additional so, incremental so, additional so we are talking about close to 300000 tons this year and about 330000 around that about next year okay and 330000 next year and this includes you mentioned uh, 24000 tons from the mill liners for next year no no no, no. so even let me say mill liners is a part of my total volume okay. we are talking of incremental volume okay fine and you said um, and your for your 300 crores capex and fy24 uh, 200 crores will be for the grand meter land 30 and other 60 70 crores is that right all right yeah. okay sure thank you sir thank you thank you next question is from the line of chiranjeet singh from dsp mutual fund please go ahead yeah hello sir uh, first yeah, of all congratulations kunal bhai and sanjay ji for very good set of numbers thank you sir and, uh, you know in a very tough environment with so many challenges we have been able to achieve uh, very good volumes uh, for the first 9 months so sir my first question is in terms of uh, when we look at you know despite the duties which got imposed in you know three different regions we have been able to achieve you know good set of volumes and have been able to make up for the 25 to 30000 uh, tons of uh, shortfall in volumes so we can just touch upon you know has it been a new customer you know acquisition which got accelerated which helped us or any specific region or customer which helped us achieve this you know in a very tough environment that's my first question sir so i think it is uh, it's just that those four years three years we didn't grow because of those reversals but the whole thesis sir was that you know there is enough market for us right we've been talking about a market in excess of 2 million tons 2 and a half 3 million tons even for forged material you know where chrome is only half a million tons and there is this you know reasonably large runway for us to continue to grow it's just that we talked about it and these reversals meant that our growth was not visible right here i mean uh, so so we made good some of that and continued to grow the idea is that you know if our thesis is correct if our understanding of the market is you know reasonably on cue we believe that chrome is a better solution than forged in 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 material working conditions in 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 material my in material number of mines you know where which will allow us for that growth runway uh, as we grow this is all uncharted for it even for an indian company to be selling directly to consumers in uh, 120 countries and this is not a commodity product it's a it's a solution driven where we engage there are consequences of using our product right and to that extent that's the time it takes and which is what we've not been able to you know really plug and say i'll grow you know x amount this year versus next just because of the decision making cycle there is but yeah i think this growth has is a mixed bag it's it's existing customers having grown but clearly these are new customers you know where we have migrated from forged into chrome so uh, i think it it's the whole thesis that we've been talking about you know coming uh, coming forth you know in this uh, in this volume addition that we that has come along okay sir Uh, so the other aspect is now again for the next year we are very pop, you know positive in terms of doing 30 to 35000 tons of incremental volume so here uh, will you be able to you know help us in terms of the incremental how much will be from new customers how much from existing customers and how is the new customer pipeline looking like you know from number of uh, mines that you'd be targeting sir for in our case even if it's the same customer if i'm getting more volume it's like a new customer for us because total effort is different right it's not where the customer is growing or giving us half and saying next i'll give you more right if he so you know we if it's a different side of the same customer the effort is completely independent of work that we've done before the whole effort to you know do proof of concept to make sure we are doing enough trials to give comfort discussion on pricing you know okay there'll be some relief that there is uh, reference from a related mind side but large part of the effort remains the same 
so, so the, the new 30000 tons is you know uh, the 30000 tons you're talking of i would say at least 85 80 85% would be new customers okay great sir and sir uh, we have also talked about you know liners now picking up pace in terms of overall volume next year so and we have been doing you know fair bit of testing with the customers so do you think that uh, you know uh, next year as our solution gets implemented there could be you know positive surprise to that in terms of a beta margin or the profitability profile you have touched it also earlier but uh, has there been any kind of a you know increase in the overall you know profitability what we see on the liner side uh, um, liner is still 25,000 tons of 300,000, sir. So, you know, less than even 8 9%. And like we explained, minor line, liners are part of the non casting, non grinding media piece of, you know, what we do, which, anyways, had a higher margin compared to grinding media because the cost, effort, everything is not comparable. So, uh, I don't think so. It is more uh, mining liner related margin. But clearly, I think there is a, as we go forward, as, as the world, realizes that you know uh, as, as today you don't get people to do menial tasks let alone engineering and high-end work in the western world it's starting to reflect in china it's come it will happen in india right i think for a type of business that we are in where you need hands to do work you need skilled hands wanting to work on the shop floor i think india remains a great place and and going forward we just remain optimistic about it that there are enough modes in the business that a fair margin would you know, would continue. Now, that fair margin is, is a very, you know, complex subject. And to that extent, we have, coming from Badrash by the whole philosophy is that we want to keep this business for many more decades. And a 2022 is a robust margin. We've done 25, we've done 28 in quarter, we've done 18 in others, and that's linked to a lot of other things. So we stopped, you know, uh, spending our time and effort to postulate what will it be next year or this quarter. Uh, from a margin standpoint, please allow us that, that you know, we are not able to give a, more color on, you know, uh, beyond what, what I've just said. From a tonnage standpoint, I think mill liner is exciting for us. Just, just the whole competency is coming together. It's a very, it's a product aligned to everything else that we are otherwise doing. But we've seen many, many years where we've talked about and not delivered or the growth has been slower. I think 30,000 is a good place for us to start and stabilize from. Um, maybe a better uh, guidance uh, in another 12 months, right? Mining liner is also fairly due for us. Uh, as a philosophy, we would not want to extrapolate one or two good quarters into a guidance going forward. So I think 30,000 uh, tons is a fair guidance to leave with, uh, you know, for now. Got it, Kunal bhai. Uh, thanks for taking my questions and uh, giving detailed responses. Uh, that was uh, also from my side. And all the best. Thank you, the Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Bhumika Nair from DM Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. And congratulations on a good set of numbers. Thanks. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So most of my questions have been answered. Just one or two things. Uh, you mentioned that, uh, you know, there's, uh, we've started now kind of uh, the past two is much more easier with the client. So if I were to just take a step back, how has the nature of the contract in terms of raw material pass through or freight pass through or any other cost pass through, how has that changed over the last two to three years um, in general time? The struggle was, so when the raw material costs were going up, I think the pass through was coming along, but by the time you pass through, See, first of all, it's, it's the, the discussion on pricing is very dicey, right? right. It goes up, but the, you, you know, we, when, you're, when it's going up, you always feel this is the top and chances are it's coming back. You don't want to waste your conversation with the customer on a pricing discussion unless it's inevitable and required because there are plenty other things that we do with them, right? I want a higher price because of... Parasaman from Bloomberg, may I take your name, please? Parasaman from Bloomberg, may I take your name, please? Customers are always coming back and saying, you know, can we do 80% of this, 70% of this, all of it. You know, they are large customers, right? Mm -hmm. So raw material pass, and by the time the pass-through came up, the prices, raw material cost went up higher even, right? And that cycle was there for two years. So we never went to fair margin. You know, I recovered, but by the time my cost went up again. 
Right. The big thing was passing through of the shipping cost. That was never part of the contract, and it's still not part of the contract. It's just that you know, here's my shipping cost, and here's because I can't contractually. I mean, there's a lot of volatility. There's there's a little bit of complex science behind shipping. Hmm. Uh, I think the big win for us was to be able to pass through that. Right. That was a that was a direct question on my model where I'm producing in India and supplying to the rest of the world, and hmm. and shipping rates go up, and and there are local incumbents. Right. Maybe these forging guys and others. Uh, yeah. thankfully all of it came through all of my shipping cost has been passed through i don't think many companies can lay claim to this statement right so to that extent we there is a this reinforces that everything that we're doing the cost structures that we have the talent that we have in india right this is the place that we're built in and the global footprint you know and the structure that we have it it's it's a it over a three year period i think it that's what the endorsement you know that comes through so i think the contract is still a pass through for costs shipping right. is something that you know is, is something is get discussed on a spot basis so i just to quickly add i think most of the contracts are long term 3 years or above and the purchase orders are typically for a quarter so you know this adjustment they happen quarter over quarter it doesn't happen every month got it Yeah. So, so so now on the way down right when commodity prices are starting to slightly correct uh, though there is some bit of volatility freight is obviously falling down quite a bit so would that also get passed on with a decent yeah. lag now where it will be again customer will be it's a quarterly like, raw material is a quarterly adjustment in 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 a fair number of contracts raw material is not something that we want to sit with and keep talking about each time so where raw material pass throughs are coded into a large number of contracts uh, and and that will happen as is so wherever the price is at the end of the quarter that becomes the basis for the subsequent quarter fair point and the rest of it will be based on discussions of how much exactly. they want to take and a it, price there's a price. thin line between coding everything and you know for example auto component companies where you know their customers are tying them every nut bolt into cost and a structure is there right and and that's something that whether that's a you know structure you want versus where we are where there's a there is we would like to keep discussion because there's a value add that we are bringing along right we are not a replaceable vendor because there is always a conversation my sales guys always at the site to discuss new opportunities to add value i right? the the discussion on pricing should be the last conversation right so that's where right. you know uh, yeah yeah got it got it uh, so the other thing was just uh, what is has been the price trends in ferrochrome of late um, in terms of december jan there was some up move in commodities are we saying exactly. it it reduced but it, it went down say by 15% went up by another Fifty percent, but bounce back. I think it would be about ten percent lower uh, than about nine months ago. Ten to twelve percent. Okay. Um, on the uh, volume trajectory, uh, clearly it's very heartening to see the kind of up move that we are seeing. You know, close to three hundred thousand this year. Next year, about another thirty, forty thousand tons. And if I look at mining within that, it will be about two hundred thousand tons. Um, now, in terms of the overall market, obviously it's much larger. um what can possibly help accelerate this additional volume to you know maybe a 40 50000 tons kind of a range or higher uh, what additional steps do we need to do kind of uh, to grow at a faster pace uh, where does that tipping point come where we see a faster acceptance a faster turnaround with new clientele or uh, i think the of- emphasis is uh, the bhumika it's been a three year wild ride i think mm-hmm. it's just to stabilize continue to grow our customers are not such that we are not an e-commerce business where you know there is hyper uh, emphasis on high growth right idea is that we want to grow but we have to grow making sure we are not doing anything inadvertent at the customer end right we don't want to go give out uh, guarantees or give out benefits that may not accrue and leaves you know that conversation with a heartburn i think 30000 ton for now is a fair amount of growth of course we can do better and more but i think given the variables given what we have seen over last 5 7 years uh, we would rather wait and watch there could be opportunities to do more but for now uh, as we learn about the world you know and 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 growth within this environment i think we'll be happy with the 30000 ton for now okay okay great so this helps uh, wishing you all the very best thank you thanks Bye.
The next question is from the line of Bhavan from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, congratulations, uh, Kunal Bai and team uh, for a great set of numbers. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, so, but my question is, uh, the uh, EBITDA margins that you have reported in this quarter of about 30%, excluding the non-operational income and uh, foreign exchange gain, uh, if you were to take business as usual, we understand it's not never the case, but given the lead lag in pricing on, what would have been a normalized uh, margin in this quarter if you take off those lead lags into consideration? Uh, we have not done that exercise. I mean, we can do it, but I don't think it helps us, you know, uh, any better uh, doing that bridge. You know, I, we'll have to work on it, what that margin would have been. Okay. So or, is uh, it putting it the other way around, you know, we have been saying that about normal operating EBITDA in a normal set of circumstances could be anything in the region of 22% or thereabouts, a little higher also. Yes, we have been reporting better operating margins. Uh, but, uh, you know, as we have been repeatedly saying, we are not giving uh, consciously any guidance. Uh, so I think a very base case scenario of 22% would be a, a better uh, number to work with on a long-term average basis. It can move up year over year, but at this point in time, we are not giving any guidance on that. Sure. The second question, again, which is a sub-part of this, I mean, and if I look at your employee cost over the last three years, I mean, the quarterly average has been in that 36, 38 crores a quarter. Uh, over the last three years where we have seen significant amount of inflation, you have increased capacities and volumes. Um, uh, if you could give us a perspective, how, how has uh, this been managed? Is it through increased automation, uh, lesser manpower, working with incremental? It will be useful to understand as we see that at least uh, a percent and a half has come from the, the operating leverage benefit, from it, only from the employee basis. Yeah, I think, uh, but that will catch up over a period. I think employee inflation in India is, you know, uh, already picking up. But over the last three years, you are absolutely right. We've done a lot of optimization. We, we used the COVID period. We were already lean, right? We have, we have already, we don't have a fancy head office. There, were, there weren't costs in my PNL. Uh, uh, which were outlandish. There weren't any, there is no fat in my over it, but nevertheless, we went through the plans. We didn't optimize, tried to optimize whatever, right? So during those three years, uh, we, we tried to keep the same absolute number, uh, which is by some optimization at the plant level. All the capacity in the production we added, we tried to do it without additional staff. I think broadly that was what we started with. And, uh, but this figure will, uh, you know, you will start seeing some amount of increase there. Also, uh, our uh, uh, manpower costs, some, of, some amount of contractual manpower costs, which would have gone up, are sitting in other costs. So you will have to add both to see the real impact. You know, at an employee level, uh, I think it is, uh, I don't know what it was last year or the year before that, but uh, we've, 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 we've done some amount of optimization. Uh, and, and the balance is in my other expenses, other other expenses. Just one thing to add, Kunal, as a percentage, it might appear to be dropping, but if you compare absolute numbers, this is about 10% increase year over year as a normal increase, about 7 to 10%. Yeah, that's what it is. But percentage would appear to be a little yeah, because growth. manpower is an absolute. We try to do manage growth with the same manpower. I think exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, the the other question is on the realization. We have seen about almost 172 rupees a kg uh, this quarter, and uh, you mentioned about uh, softening of the input prices, which will now come in. Uh, so what we want to understand is. Uh, uh, in your pricing, uh, um, how have uh, this structure like, uh, because freight is a large element, uh, what part of your uh, pricing uh, or the contracts that you have are CIF uh, link pricing and um, uh, given that the volatility that we have seen in freight is also negated and if you were to take these uh, one-off element, the, the volatility out, this 172 rupees, uh, what directionally 
would we see it like eight ten percent lower in the subsequent quarters? Very difficult to put a number to it, but gradually, yes, it can go down a little bit. What exactly, how it is going to go down? Frankly, it's very difficult to decipher. Very difficult because, see, everything is not automatic. Like, uh, 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 it's, so it's always subject to some negotiation. So if it goes up fast, it may not go down in the same proportion or with the same speed. But around, uh, over a long term, our average is, Commodity cycle goes down, there would be a reduction, maybe 5 to 10 percent, but again it's a gas, there is no arithmetic which we have put to it yet. So, as things stand today, given the current freight and the input prices, what would this 172 be? Will it be like, as you mentioned, there is a lag impact. So, no, so I explained, no, I have, we have not done any maths to explain that. Q4 may it now go or Q1 next year it now go, but only a month take over a longer period. If not strictly quarter over quarter, if this trend continues, it could be five to ten percent. Yeah. Understand. Fair. Uh, uh, the other question is on like um, when uh, we had the question on uh, the Canada. Um, one of the explanation that you had highlighted that okay, now all is not gone, but. Given the way the freight had gone up from three thousand dollars per container to eight nine thousand um, dollars, it's become economically uh, questionable because of the freight. Now that freight has reversed completely, uh, could we expect that uh, uh, that fifty percent is not lost? And can you see that reversing, or are we already seeing that reversing because the freight normalization has already happened? Uh I think as a as a as a uh, decision as far as Canada is concerned, given its subsidies because they are investigating again, we don't. There is a large market for us, you know, across the world. I don't. We we would rather not keep talking about Canada as a specific point. I think it may come, it may not come. Some may come, some may not come. I don't. <laughs> we are working in in a way where that's incidental, right? Just like cement is today, right? If it happens. Tomorrow something else may happen, right? Now there is a conversation, there's a local plant and there's a authority involved, you know, looking into it. And, you know, to that extent, we would rather be, you know, into a, in a free market situation and do our bit. So uh, if, if it's okay, we would rather, we have, we, we have decided not to speak about the Canada business and, and we consider it not a material part of our operations. Sure, appreciate that. Last question. Uh, there was a lot of effort being put across uh, on some of the uh, South American markets, which are large copper producing mines, but our share here is uh, much lower. Uh, could you uh, talk about uh, the progress that we have mm -hmm. had uh, since the a year or so that uh, we have renewed focus uh, in think, that part uh, of the world? You know, so uh, again, that the whole effort there, we we are making a lot of effort in those markets. A lot of the, there was a large pushback of, on account of freight costs, right? It just became the highest freight costs from India were to South of America, South America, and uh, you know the, the, there was no commercial conversation or viability given that hard cost. Now that shipping rates look to be on their way down, they're still not corrected as much. I think it's just becoming an interesting time. We are doubling our efforts over there. It remains a very, very important market for us, and we hope that we have something interesting to share in next few quarters. Sure. So in our uh, uh, guidance of incremental volumes of 30, 35,000 for the next financial year, uh, have we built in something coming from uh, incrementally from uh, the South American, Latin American market, or it's agnostic of that? Yeah, again, it is agnostic of that. Okay. Yeah, okay. If today we are saying there will be yeah. some... Our plans are very different. You know, we want to do much more. There's a lot of effort already done, right? So, uh, it something from South America may come and something else may not come. I think 30 is what where we are comfortable that this much should happen. I mean, it's not contingent on one or two or three mines coming up or not. You know, we are we have assumed some portion of our considered market not coming. Now, whether that does not come from South America or another market, I mean, it is a uh, question today. Uh, great. Uh, uh, thank you so much and wish you all the best. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, so we still have any questions. Would like to go ahead. We have exceeded the time. Yeah, yeah. We can. Uh, how much more questions do you have? How many more questions?
So we are on seven questions in the queue. And let's quickly finish them. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. I request to all the participants, please restrict to two questions per participant. If time permit, please come back in the question queue. Next question is from Ryan of Anupam Gupta from India Info Line. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Kunal. I enjoy a good set of numbers. Uh, so just yeah. quickly, harping on re relation a bit, uh, do you have a sense of what the exit uh, rate of relation was versus a 169 for a quarter which you have reported? Sorry, say again? So the exit rate of realizations, let's say what you uh, repriced in December versus for the average of the quarter. Uh, was there a material second, difference? Or? Second quarter was 167, third quarter was 169. Uh, so let's say, what I'm asking, let's say what was it in December if you have that sort of a sense versus the average of the quarter? Well, I don't have that number, no. So which, the, 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 uh, you, you're talking of a particular month? Yeah, so what I was trying to look at is what sort of reduction has happened in December, although November, October, November. No, it is not monthly. Sort of... It is our generally the pricing is for a quarter, when, which is based on the previous quarter's uh, costs. So we okay. don't have a monthly adjustment, Anupam Bhai. Fine, okay. And so second question, uh, just want the export split. So as a revenue, we know that 80% is exports. But let's say if you look at in terms of volumes, what is the export mix? And again, within mining and non-mining, what is the export mix? If you can broadly tell us that. Uh, I don't think it will help the uh, under, underlying question that you may have. I think we'll leave it to this macro figure. Okay. Okay. Understand. That's, mm -hmm. that's all from my side. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Amar Moria from Alpha Accurate Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> so thanks a lot for the opportunity. Two questions. Sir, you indicated uh, that, you know, um, 3,000 was from the new plant. So basically, uh, uh, 6,000 is from the old capacity for the mill lining, right? And 3,000 additional we did this quarter, correct? No, 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 no. I was only saying that what, what there is a general question on what's the update with the new plant. I preempted that by saying whole year we'll do about five to 6,000 tons uh, from the new plant, which, you know, is part of the total approximate 24,000 tons that we'll do full year for mining mill liners. Okay, so... So, but then sir, capacity doubled, right? Uh, capacity is 50,000 tons for the new plant. Correct. So, when you say 6,000 ton from the old plant, uh, old plant no, is no, 6,000 no. tons. Are yeah. Baba, 24,000 may say 18 came from the existing plant and 6 from the new plant. That's broadly what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. And year then, to uh, year to date. Okay. Year to date. That's where you're saying. Not year to date or fiscal year 23. That's the guidance. That's the guidance. Okay. Okay. Uh, but then, but then we expect we we expect uh, the utilization of the new plant. Let's say what would be the utilization for 24 then? 24 will do about 50,000 tons. We the, our guidance was adding 10,000 tons approximately each year to be fully utilized between four and five years, right? In four to five years, so that we are on pace for that. Okay, perfect, perfect. Hopefully, do better than that, but at least that much. Sure, sure, sure. And secondly, sir, this power cost, I mean, even in this quarter, reduced significantly. So should we see that further going ahead in the quarters, the power cost will reduce further? Power cost reduction is, I think, not really material. There's also this cost savings that we accrue from our captive power sources, plus the little bit of efficiency that kicks in. Otherwise, I think I don't think cost will reduce. It, it, in, in fact, it will only increase because of, you know, the state electricity board where we buy from. Uh, we, we don't expect a reduction there going forward. Because in this quarter, per ton, power cost has reduced. That is why I'm asking. Per ton, I've not done the math, but that's also product picks and other things, right? Again, the power cost is a function of two, three things. How much WTG credit we got, how much production was more or less. So, you know, there is a, there is a variance analysis we do quarter over quarter. So this this quarter, one of the key reasons is that there is actually a reduction in production. Okay. No, exactly. No, per, don't per ton, per ton should not impact, right? No, no, no. So again, that's exactly what I'm saying. Don't go on per ton basis because we don't do internal per ton calculations at all. And it is very, very misleading. A large volume plant operating at a higher capacity, which are with a semi-automatic or a manual large casting plant operating at a different matrix. So, you know, therefore, it's very difficult. We don't do per ton. It's not possible. 
Part and power cost is not possible. Actually, it, it will not give you the correct yardstick the way. And and our cost has, in fact, if I just do the math, we produced eighty thousand tons, and at a cost of hundred and two crores last year, last quarter, it was about hundred one rupee twenty seven paise, and that's about one rupee three paise. I don't know where you got the reduction actually. So, so Kunal, that's what you know. It's very difficult. We don't. No, they're not reduced. No, no. Let me clarify. Cost is not reduced per ton for. Ton of production. It has, in fact, gone up slightly. We can, we can take this offline, but for eighty thousand tons, there's hundred three crores. For sixty five, sixty four thousand plus, it's about eighty four crores. That cost has not reduced. Uh, you can just do the math again and uh, connect with us offline if you still want to unpack that further. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Morey. I'll request you to come back in the question queue for a follow up question. The next question is from Lionel uh, Sajan Kumar, individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, well, congrats, Sanjay and Kunal Bhai, for a great set of numbers. Uh, you know, uh, while you can uh, using the cricket pa parlance, you know, uh, while you continue to guide uh, like Dravid, but you your actuals are you know like Shevak hitting the ball out of the park. So, you know, I just want to know why you are remain so conservative in your guidance. Sir, right, when you run a, a business like ours, you'll realize the amount of variables that we work with. Uh, we honestly, the idea is, and again, I'll give a short half a minute answer, is we actually focus on the long term. A lot of our customers are there for a long period, right? There's a lot of solution-driven conversations happening. It is as long as, as long as I'm doing that job well, the outcome is going to be okay, right? And that's where all our effort goes into the outcome. currency changes raw materials change shipping cost change the competitive scenario changes some duty you know position comes in the idea is that despite all of this how can we continue to grow and keep a decent margin and keep the market for a few decades going forward right when we look at it i think 2022% is a fair margin to keep you look at us on a 10 year period we may not be very far off from there right now when when costs are going down And and previous quarter raw material savings are still baked in. We've not passed through that. There will be some amount of extra margin sitting over there, right? That's what we have explained. So yeah. I, we, you know, we, our guidance does not uh, adjust for, you know, uh, uh, timeline related uh, differences that may come along. I think that's the only yeah. difference uh, to that, you know, in in our guidance. No, no, I completely understand. No, no, I just wanted to congratulate for the great performance. Sir. Uh, sir, uh, just to Thank elaborate you. on the same point, uh, you know, I just want to know how how much of uh, forex uh, movement uh, you need to pass to the customers, or is it something that will be retained by the company? No, so we, because uh, the reason why I'm asking is uh, this year uh, rupee has depreciated almost 10 percent uh, vis-a-vis the dollar. The dollar. So that could have also contributed to a bit of uh, you know from the, the whatever the constant 20 to 24 percent guidance. Yeah, but so that uh, you know, uh, absolutely. But it it does not flow. It, we're not a. It's not a like an IT company in selling to a US market where Indian costs affects margins. Because even though I'm selling in US dollar or you know, or large part of a business in US dollar, we are there is actually 120 countries on the other side in which they're importing in a local currency. You know, when the so so India in rupee has weakened, the factor is dollar has strengthened right across a basket of in, of currencies. so you know when when indian currency is weakened by 10% my dollar pricing may have to be reduced you know to adjust for their local currency increase so it's not a one way street for us but generally speaking directionally a weaker rupee is better than a stronger rupee right because if the rupee strengthens i have to go ask for a higher dollar price when there is a lower when i have to reduce my dollar pricing it's a happier place to be than the otherwise so directionally yes it it helps us but in reality Uh, a lot of that has to be passed through just for us to remain competitive you know when in for the customer in their importing currency got it sir thanks a lot and so okay. that the next question, second question is uh, you have uh, almost 2300 crores of cash so just want to know any plans uh, on the usage are we, are we looking at any backward integration strategies uh, no, nothing to that extent we just believe and like we keep saying our best is still ahead of us and we are excited of what what's presented in terms of the landscape and ai can actually become you know uh, a, a a very different uh, business going forward in 3 4 years and cash allows us to have that wider vision but as of now nothing outside our core business you know there is no fund use plan outside of what we are doing which is working capital or factories you know for for our business 
great sir all the very best sir thank you thank you a request to all the participants please restrict to two questions per participant next question is from the line of aditya khandelwal from simpl please go ahead yeah hi sir thanks for the opportunity so i just wanted to get a better understanding of the sorry to interrupt your voice is not coming very loud may i request you to speak a little louder uh, am i audible now better like better okay continue please yeah i wanted to get a better understanding of the mill line market so like in grinding media where chrome is gaining market share over forge so just wanted to know if that is also happening in the mill line segment like chrome is gaining market share over it's not, not really uh, mill lining has a different alloy base and uh, we have we are trying to introduce new alloys but it is not forge versus chrome the, the existing incumbent is a low chrome product and and we are in that same alloy range if i were to use that word uh, the differentiation for us comes in in terms of design of the liners and of course in the metallurgy that we are offering ultimately resulting in uh, benefits for using our product versus you know the uh, the competition uh, in, in in the mill lining space yeah so the reason why i'm asking was because there is another listed player which claims that is hybrid mill liner you know which is made of steel and rubber has got the same benefits which we have uh, with a chrome uh, chrome mill liners so just wanted to know your views on it uh i'm not sure uh, we've understood you know what their uh, claim is but rubber and and steel are generally mutually exclusive you know there are uh, operating conditions where steel is a better solution and then there are operating conditions where rubber is the de facto and there will be overlap conditions where either can work depending on 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 some other variables but but that's our understanding of the market uh, i don't think i can reflect or respond to someone else's view on that that's for you to verify uh, whatever is a steel market uh, in our opinion is and will continue largely to be a steel market uh, of course with the caveat of some overlap operating conditions where rubber could be a solution and likewise where rubber can be replaced by steel on the other side so uh, with the caveat of that overlap we believe uh, steel uh, uh, you know uh, alloy will cut steel as a material will continue you know in the market that we are serving so just one last question uh so you mentioned that we should look at the company on an ebitda margin basis so if yeah. the realization comes down and uh, the margins remains the same so the ebitda on an absolute basis would be a little lower but with volume growth our ebitda would be on an absolute basis remain the same or show some or uh, some kind of growth in the next year so that would uh, would that be a yeah, yeah. correct understanding technically theoretically what happens that when my margin remains constant sales theoretically comes down a little bit then in terms of percentage actually it will grow a little bit as a percentage of sales correct having said that there are multiple variables with which we work one is product mix second is the status of pass through which is a particular product may at certain times and you know we we do multiple products like casting liners grinding media so depending on product mix also there is plays a very major role in pushing the ebitda needle uh, either which way having said that technically and theoretically if i work with a basic understanding that i want to earn and maintain my margins then in percentage terms in a falling pricing scenario actually the margins will go up as a percentage but that's the theoretical answer thank you aditya i'll request to come back in the question queue for a follow up question the next question is from the line of sujit jain from esk investment managers please go ahead yeah thanks congratulations uh, did i hear it correctly that every year mill liner volume can go up 10000 so Let's say in FI 24, it could be 34,000 tons. No, so you see, we are talking of a consolidated volume this year, which Kunal explained is about 20, 23,000 tons. Uh, our rated capacity of the new plant is about 50,000. We are also doing some liners from our existing plant. So we believe that over next two to three years, we should achieve a optimum, near optimum capacitization. but an exact number of 10000 is not what we are talking about we are talking of a directional opportunity or yeah opportunity is good our efforts are on let us see 
but we are talking of a blended volume incremental growth of 30,000. So we are not saying usme se mill liner itna hoga. No, we don't do that. Second question is on Brazil uh, that I think uh, was to come up five years uh, you know after the initial uh, uh, duty which was in December 2017. So it should have and could have come up uh, for hearing in Brazil. Uh, if you can quickly give an update on that. December 17 was when it was imposed and uh, this uh, period was for five years. Yeah, but so it will be, uh, we'll see next year, but as of now, currently we have already, as I explained in the earlier call, we already started supplying on a decent basis to Brazil and they are paying the duty. So very honestly, we have become agnostic to the uh, anti dumping duty scenario in Brazil. It should have come up for hearing um, again with the government in five years, December 22. That was the last understanding that we had. Yeah, it will come up. It will come up. But as of now, we have not heard anything of that. Sanjay, I got dropped off. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We can hear you. Yeah. So yes, sir, it, yes, it will come up for re, for uh, reprocessing uh, middle of next year, middle of this year, 23. And currently 11.8% duty. Correct. 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 Yeah. One last question is on Sal. See, how much of your raw material is basically ferrochrome and how much would be scrap? So, uh, ferrochrome, ferrochrome broadly. 25% hmm. of my purchase, of my uh, consumption, of my production. Sal would be 25% of your ferrochrome no, no, no. consumption. No, no, no. Sal would be how much? Sal would be just one one of the five vendors that we keep buying from Arish Bhai. I don't think uh, uh, there will be materiality to their supply immediately. Ultimately, we'll see how, how they scale up and what happens. Sure, you said 25% is ferrochrome of the RM. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In volume terms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And typically for 100 tons, you'll require 110 tons of RM. Correct, correct. Sure, sure. Thank you. All the best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I now hand the management. I now hand the conference call to the management uh, for closing thank comments. Thank you, Nira, uh, for taking this. Thank you all uh, for joining the call. Uh, as always, Sanjay and I remain available for your questions, follow-up questions offline. Uh, and I look forward to engaging again uh, for the fourth quarter in numbers. Thank you and have a yeah. good evening. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. On behalf of AI Engineering Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.